if it works. <coughs> Hi, this is Great British Churches and today we are at St Peter's Church in Claydon. Now, we're doing the inside first. Normally I would like to go around the outside and do the inside last, but it's getting a bit late and we're worried that they're going to start shutting the church soon. So I just want to show you this quickly. I don't think you want to see it because the light's coming in. Um, but I will get Paul to take some pictures and we'll see if we can put them on with the video at the same time of the glass. But there's a beautiful window there right above the door. Now this is this weird church. I'm just going to swing you around. And Paul is around here somewhere. But as you can see, this church has transept. And it's very unusual for a, a small parish church to have transept. Now, it is very dark in here, so I'm not sure how much you are going to see. I do have Paul with a torch on his phone. Hopefully... <laughs> he is going to be able to highlight some of the features that we are looking at in this church today. Um, so the transepts. They, like I say, they're unusual in a church like this. And they have a continuous roof ridge which runs across the level of the nave. Oh, see if we can find that in a moment. Um, they were part of an ambitious scheme of restoration in decorated style, which was initially initiated by the Reverend George Jewry in 1851 to 1852. Now, you might be aware from our previous video about Reverend George Drury. He was part of the Aiken and Burial case. Um, but he was also wrecked here, and he's actually buried out in the grounds. Um, but we have yet to find out where he is actually buried. Um, but he was quite a fire and brimstone character. Um, he's probably more Catholic than Protestant, if we're honest. Um, and he built a big high wall around the rectory next door um, to keep out the nonconformists. Um, which I will show you when we go outside and do the outside scenes. So, we're just having a quick walk around now, because uh, like I say, we are expecting them to come and lock the church up at any moment. So I'm sorry about the camera angles at the moment, but this is just a, a quick one. We've got a few ledger stones on the, on the floor here do like a ledger stone. Um, you have to excuse my husband's feet, but he does actually have the torch. I don't know if you can read that, but perhaps Paul will read it out to you. It's in Latin. Oh, is it? Yeah, but it's from 1711. Yeah. From somebody called Johannes Pistol. Okay. I think. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can get you down any further. Perhaps people out there who understand Latin can see that and understand what that says. So, what is it that we've got here then, Paul? Oh, this is beautiful. Well, we thought it was a vestry from the <coughs> outside. This is that piece that juts out. There is a thing that they think there's an anchor, or there was an anchorite cell here. So, this could be what they're talking about being an anchorite, so. Explain what that means, Mike. Um, <laughs> that's putting me on the spot. Thanks, it's Paul. somebody who would be sometimes walled up in a church, a convent. There's clearly monastic buildings around this church. That, that's uh, evident, and we'll see that when we go outside. But an anchorite was somebody who stayed in a church, often walled up with just a small and it was so that they could uh, pray and just be part 
So you dedicated to God 24 hours, seven days a week. Exactly, and they didn't leave. And often anchorites, it, it's a tradition that goes back into really early Christianity, but sometimes you get uh, anchorites. Another form was a stylite, where people would live on top of a column, hmm. lower a basket down, have food taken up, and they would, they would observe, they would pray. Probably the most famous anchorite would be Julian of Norwich. Yeah. Who was um, bricked up? Is it some church? Is it Norwich Cathedral? Near the cathedral, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So she's probably the most famous anchorite. Near, near this part of the world, at least. Yeah. But. Um, but this yeah, is an absolute. Yeah. Right. Let me just see if we can show you. The ceilings are amazing. They're just all sort of piecemeal put together absolutely beautiful i'm sorry if this is so dark <coughs> you should remember to bring a torch with us i think so we've got we've got an amazing window here again i will get paul to take pictures of these um because we've got the light coming through and i'm aware that um that just looks like a blinding light when you look at it on film so we will take pictures of these and if I can find a way of putting them into the video as well, then I will do so. But we've got one here. This one's interesting, Paul. I will give unto thee the keys of heaven or, and uh, of earth. This window replaces one destroyed by a German parachute mine in the war of 1939 to 1945. And I do believe this church was hit by a landmine. This, this would be it. It was, ba it was heavily damaged. Yeah. We've got several. We've got one just up the road was actually hit by a VT flying bomb and was completely demolished. Yeah. But if you could just shine your torch up at this corner here. Right. Let me just find my Because we've got an angle proscenium here. Yeah. I'm gonna... Ooh. Oh, both of them have got drains going to the outside. Yeah, that is beautiful. And then we've got some original tracer work there as well. There's one in the other corner as well. Oh, yeah. If you look at the altar here, this is, a, this is quite an important church here. Yeah. Very small, but... Well, a lot of the work here was um, redone by George Drury. Oh, he's... Yeah, he's an interesting chap, isn't he? Yeah, Find yeah, very, yeah, very interesting. <coughs> and I do love the floor tiles up here. Yeah. There's master, there's nice bits of history in here. There's bits of everything from St John Manley's people in the 1960s who've. Uh, yeah. Uh, been involved with the church right, right, right back a long way. Drury, was that the name you were saying about that? Eldest daughter of the late George Drury. Ah, yes. And she died aged, I think it was 68. Yeah, what does it say on here? Sorry, I'm not sort of very good with the camera angles today. So, let's... She died in there's something. He died in 1830. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sorry, 1837. Right. Um, where did I see it? She died in... Was it in love? In love there. and... It's very difficult to read. She died in love and charity with all something on the something of December 1812, when she was 38 years yeah. old. Oh, I love this uh, in graffiti. Oh, let's have a look. 1943. John Dow Double. There we go. I'm just trying to get in there. And 
this is one of these churches we've walked in. We've not really had much of a time to have a recce before the camera's been turned off, just because we think the church is trust chat's going to come at any moment and knock it. But look at that wall. Mm. Oh, yes. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but there is traces of decoration. Try and zoom in. Very, very faint. It just looks like someone scratched it on, really. But it just goes back to what we're saying about these churches. The whole inside of these churches in, in, the time, in, in the times of the Catholic Church would have been really bright, brightly painted. Now, that could have been the anchorite cell there. That, I wouldn't be surprised. If that was an anchorite cell. It is believed, or it's one theory, that it was an anchorite cell here. But apparently this George Drury was a carver and he did do some of the carving that's inside this church. And if we just have a look at this. There's more of this on this wall. Though, yeah, there's some down here as well, look. Oh my word, look at that. Well, if you keep camera still, and people can see it. Move your arm a little bit, that's it. See, that is absolutely fabulous. And that's just sitting there under the plaster, and it's under the whitewash. You can make it sit all over these walls. That's the whole lot of covers. Yeah. And this is what's underneath the, the plaster. Because at the time, these churches, we spoke about it with Winfield Church in, in an earlier video, but there was a commissioner, wasn't there, for the king, uh, mm. for each county or area. And they went round, about probably about the times of the interagnum, mm. uh, when we didn't have a king, and a lot of imagery was smashed out, windows were often smashed out, mm. and this stuff is just whitewashed over and covered up, pulled down. This is an absolute... I so it's it's weird, isn't it? it <laughs> is. It's so unusual. It really is. I just hope... That you're getting all this it is so dark in here we're doing our best with what we've got we really need to get a torch oh, i think we'll bring that big light with us next time but if paul can shine his torch on these tiles these are absolutely exquisite I don't what do we say this church was 15th century so it's built in 1400 and something yeah it is it's I don't know if you saw the ceiling. Maybe that's on the <laughs> pre 19th century, but that, that, that is quite. That was probably put there by George Jury as well. He was quite instrumental in bringing this up to date, if you like. Did you explain about this chap how he was more Catholic than. than I was going to. <laughs> right, right, no, you, you do that. Because, oh, here we go. This is something else you won't see in a Protestant church. Apart from this one. No. But just look at the bottom of the arch. That's been added on, hasn't it? It has. But it is just absolutely exquisite detailing. It's beautiful. There's another one over here. Now, I will have a look at the mo in a moment. But like I say, it is very dark here, so I am struggling to see. I do have some notes, but I am really... <laughs> struggling to see it, what's it's written down. It's worth explaining as well that uh, uh, Mel is new to this, I'm new to this, no, neither of us have done videos before, so one of the problems we've come up with is trying to edit things and get them up on YouTube for people to see, and there's been a couple of disasters just because we don't know what we're doing, basically, and uh, we, we've been doing this for years. Uh, Mel likes to research the churches, looks at the books, works out where to go and we keep finding these little gems and the trouble is if you live around one of these churches they become they disappear into the landscape and you people, sort of you take them for granted and you stop seeing them yeah. now if i walk over here now we spoke about the anchorite so and i think if anything this would be it It's just this tiny, tiny room. This tiny window. And I think that this 
would be the one. Yeah. So we have a window to the outside. It doesn't look like it would have been bricked up here no. or had a doorway or something. But food, water and stuff would be passed on and taken away. Yeah. That person would remain here. Interestingly, over there is a couple of cast iron headstones which are yeah. very rare. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Perhaps if Paul can get in there, he can, yeah, he can put a torch on them and we can read out who they are. This is such an unusual shaped church for this area, especially. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, got a couple of, uh, that one is plain. That's what I named them. No but this one, blessed are the dead. The dead. From this Lord. Which, pull it up again. Which die in the Lord. Yep. Rest in peace. Uh, in memory of Charles, beloved husband of Jane Wardley, died May 14th, 1911, is it? Okay. Age 54, until the day breaks. Yep. And they're cast iron, which I've only seen There's less a than a handful. There was a couple of uh, asylums or closed mental hospitals in the local area and they had, they used to bury patients who mm. remained at the hospital and the family had been taken away with cast iron headstones and there's, yeah. there's a few within a couple within a few miles of here. Mm. This is very unusual in here. Isn't it? it is. Now again I'm showing you stained glass window, I'm hoping you're going to see it but the way the light comes in, it just, it, it takes away the magnificence of these stained glass windows. I will, like I say, get Paul to take some photos because they are truly, truly stunning. And you can see you've got early decorated tracery there. But these windows, this one he was looking at is 1893, 1872 for the middle panel. And the far left one there is 1894. So they are absolutely beautiful. The detail on them is amazing. And hopefully Paul will be able to capture that when he takes a, a photograph of those in a moment. This window up here, just to that of interest, so I'll get nearer the camera because you may not hear me. But that window there has got some pieces of glass missing. They're actually in a picture frame down there. Mm. and they were from this landmine that hand had damaged the church. Oh, wow. So they managed to put most of it back, and where you see the gaps... Is where... They couldn't find the bits. Or they replaced them with tiled glass. Yeah. You see, everything tells a story. It's just truly, truly brilliant. So... You know, it's... This church has seen nearly 700 years of local life. This would mm. have been the centre of the community. See, they're from 1897, that window. And yeah. Uh, I think it's in one of these, one of these window frames where they've got the pieces of glass. It's here, I was spotted it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> As we can go. Mm hmm. There is one. It has a Catholic feel to it, doesn't it, very much. It does. But then that was what he was about. I'm just going to take a pew here. Um, just in this um, transept here. Oh. And look at the pulpit. I should have shown that to you. Stone pulpit with tracery on it. Absolutely amazing. Um... Now I'm trying to find something about this George Drury, because he really was. He was a little cannon, wasn't he? Yeah, very much so. Um, <laughs> but if you saw our video on Akenham Church, he was the one um, who tried to stop the burial of a little two-year-old boy. I'm just going to show you this pulpit. So he would stand in this pulpit and he would be shouting fire and brimstone 
hell and damnation. But he would call himself a priest, which, as we all know, is more of a Catholic term than a Protestant. And the Bishop of Norwich had to intervene a couple of times on the way he would do things. I'm just going to take another seat again. I am desperately, while I'm talking to you, trying to find the information. There is an awful lot of information about this George Jury. Um, I, will, I will find it. It's just that I've not collated it into the right place. Just whilst you're finding that now, I'll just put the compass on my phone. So we've got north, is that way? So that's north. North, south is the boundary of the Virgin Highlands. Yeah. And uh, yep, east is where that window is there. Mm -hmm. To the right of the pulpit. And west is, is, the, is that. Have you seen that little window on that wall in there? That's beautiful. I'm just going to get up and show that to you as well. I'm so sorry. Well, normally, I wouldn't like to be all over the place um, when I do this, but we are conscious that time is marching on and, um, and we're worried about that we're going to get locked in, basically. So, I'm just going to walk around sorry, um, and tell you about this George Jury. Um, he was a rector for most of the second half of the 19th century. Um, and he was one of the high church eccentrics. Um, he, he actually, along with a Father Ignatius, a very Irish name, so very Catholic, um, they, um, they set up a Benedictine monastery and also a nunnery, convent, sorry. And, and it was unfortunate that one of the nuns was taken away from the convent and was taken and put into an asylum where she died. But Jury's rectory that was next door, um, it suffered so much anti-Catholicism that he put up a nine-foot wall. And, a watch and there is a funny thing that does look a bit like a watchtower in it. I don't know if that is what it is. Um, but this wall soon become covered with anti-Catholic Catholic slogans. And it said that Father George rose to the challenge with enthusiasm. I can imagine that he would have done. Um, All right, I'm just read him. Right, he would actually parade through Claydon with banners of the Blessed Virgin flying and kneeling down with them in a field while singing the Ave Maria. Um, high Mass was accompanied by incense, vestments and candles. The local Protestants were scandalised beyond belief and supported by the popular opinion and low church bishop they, of Norwich, they hatched a plot after plot against him. The most famous of these was the Aiken and Burial case, which led to the, nation, the change in the national burial laws. But we covered that in our video on Aiken and Church, so if that's up, please take a look at that. And... Um, and you'll find out all about the Aiken and Burial case. But there is a book as well um, entitled The Aiken and Burial Case, which is well worth a read. If you look at the roof there, absolutely stunning. I just hope in this dim light that you're able to see the glories of this church. Can I just read that up there? Now, this is something you won't see in an Anglican church. Go ye and teach all nations, baptizing therein the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So Matthew 28, chapter 19. This really is a beautiful 
It's a strange fun. church, it really is. Um, I'm going to let Paul take you around the outside of the church now. Now this is a 15th century font, I'm just going to take that around. And you can see there's a crown there. Yeah. Now a lot of churches, they do have coats of arms of the king of the time. So we've seen some with James II, George III. And it was because the king was the head of the Protestant church. But whether that's why these crowns are on this font, I don't know. But these, there's some shields there. It looks like Henry VIII there. I'm not entirely sure. It's not been defaced at all, has it? it no, it's, it's a late one. Yeah. But look here, it looks like Henry VIII. Let's put... Let's have a little bit of uh let's have a bit of light on the situation. Hawaii on it. <laughs> Hawaii on it for both sides. Don't advertise on this channel, please. And it's strange that we've got this painted font cover. That is Henry the Eighth, isn't it? That is indeed. Yeah, well, there's that or somebody's got his hat. Yeah. I don't know, this has been scratched off, but the coats of arms you can actually see. I think they're worn away. You think that is it? Yeah, I read somewhere that some of them are worn rather than the, scratched. The, the crown worn, then. that's scratched away. You can see, look. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's actually further in. If you look, this sits more proud than that does. Okay. Well, it's beautiful. Lovely memory of Amelia Watson. 1926, age 86. Right, so, um, yeah, this is such a strange thing to have in a church. You're coming through that door, but you've got, so where would that door go to? That goes to, that goes to the bell tower, there's a picture oh, here of the bell and there's actually some pictures here of some lead work, look, on the roof. Okay. If you can see it, we've Let's got... see if we can get in. I'm so sorry about this shaky camera work today. Westminster Dragoons, somebody Royal Navy, mm. Betty loves somebody or other, <sighs> Betty my love, 1944, and the one... Oh, I wish I could see that for myself. That's not in English, that's in Dutch. Yeah. Right, so that's the bell of St. Peter's there. Yeah, and if I ring, it's going to frighten me. Yeah. <laughs> you actually see that picture there? It's actually showing the patches of the lead and where people have written yeah. them up on the roof. Yeah. It's quite good because we, we did where, where were we before we found one that had been... Raiden. Raiden, yeah, but that is a... That's a well, they're all the boot right, prints. Right. Yes, the boot yeah. prints of the... Now, this the door... Room. It doesn't look like it's going to last another five minutes. It's got so many cracks in it, and you can actually see through them. But this is an interesting little church. Yes. Yeah. Really unusual. Yeah. Look at the. You, I couldn't see them earlier, but if you look at the ceiling, there would be labels there, look, and their ceilings have all been hacked off. Where are you looking? On the on the bottom. Oh yeah. Them there. I wish I could make this lady think, but I think you're a daughter of Dutton. Where? That was laser. Yeah. There. There. Right, see okay. They've all been chopped up. Okay. Along there. Yeah. Support and that's in place. There would have been angels looking down, but they've obviously been chopped off, and the Reverend, uh, what's his name, George? George Drury. Drury hasn't replaced those. But if you just come round here and have a look at that window, look how that's where the beams on the inside. That has had gone a long time without having glass in that. There light. was a long period of neglect before he got here, apparently. Um, so, but it's a tiny little piece of glass, coloured glass up there. So chances are that would have been stained glass as well, and it might yeah. be a little bit of medieval up there. It's likely it got smashed out in the time of the Civil War. Yeah. So, what are some views of the Civil War then now? Um, 16... Oh, you're the Civil War expert. I, I'm not. I, can't, I actually can't remember. <laughs> I, suppose, I can't remember, to be honest, but I think... Well, Elizabeth died in 1663. 
three. So we had we had King James, James the first and sixth of Scotland. Let's say late 1600s, early 1700s, if anybody knows. <laughs> I think 1634 it is, if I'm, if I'm honest. Mm, 16. When was the fire alarm? 1666. 1666. So it would have been just after that, because no, that was Charles II, wasn't it? So yeah. we're just before. This is a quite a good debate to have, isn't it? <laughs> Think of Google this in seconds. I don't know why we, why we do this. Yeah, so. I don't know either. <laughs> but this is just... It's like a little bit of puge in here. It's, it's stunning. It, it's well worth a visit, but I say that on every church I ever go to. And this is another Church's Trust one, so yeah. it's probably used very rarely for religious service. Yeah. But like we say, we've got a prayer for the Ukraine there, so I think it's probably used more often than you think. Yeah, you know, but it is—it's an amazing church, and it's got so much of this history. And we haven't been outside yet because the outside was as amazing as inside. Yeah, unless we get locked in all night, and if not, we're going to be eating spider plants for the next day. There we go. Hmm, lovely. Right, so we're coming outside. <laughs> Oh, it's warm, warm right here. <laughs> it is, it was cold in that church. Now, I don't know if you can see, but that over there, that flint tower was part of the wall. Yeah, that was the wall that George Drury built to keep back the nonconformists or Protestants. If you want to put it another way. So we are now going to pick our way around here. So this is the outside of the church. And you can see that it's flint here and it's been heavily painted over in, I don't know what. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, it's not really done it any good. Did you take the photo? No, I didn't. Do you want to go in there and do the photo? No. <laughs> yeah, no. I need him to be my eyes and ears because I'll end up falling over. <laughs> so he has to walk with me to make sure that I don't. Guys, if you catch a big house in the background, that's actually the old vicarage. It's obviously a private residence. Or I a think this is the burial ground here at George Jury. I'm not entirely sure, but I have a feeling it is. And we're just going over. It has rained today <laughs> and it's just made this ground so wet and soft. Yeah, this is the grave of George Drury, the vicar. Unfortunately, you can't see any of the inscription on the stone. But that is that. And the rectory was obviously over there somewhere. Cut. It's there, it's over there. Yeah, because you've got the gate there for it. So you'd have popped in here, and there's his little, little free stall that with, with a porthole in it. Yeah. So I can see the choir boys can see him coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can see up there that the tower had been res restored at some point, and the step battlements were put on there. There is eight figures up there, but unfortunately they've all lost their heads. Now, it's probably not due to the Reformation before Paul says anything because they were added well after that point. Or were they from the earlier church and then put up there? Probably they not. Them, oh, we've got these statues, let's put them on the top. I don't know. Um, we need to have a look. Hmm. Why don't you have a look for, at the church, what I've written about that? Um, let me see. So, this is the outside of the church. I feel like this has been a bit confusing for you all at the moment. I do apologise. Let's be on the front page. So you're being told what to do here, you know that, don't you? This is I don't tell you what to do, I instruct you politely. Okay. Right, so we're going to take a walk. We can't actually get around the back of the church there, it's a bit overgrown. So we're going to take a walk. I do try my hardest not to stand on the graves. I don't care how long they've been there, but they deserve the respect of not being stood upon. So, 
just bear with me. <coughs> so we're going round. There's an amazing grave here. I saw it's just by the door as you go into the church. <coughs> I'm just going to take a quick look at that while Paul gets. Sorry? We never saw that. So you've got that. Um, for some reason, the angel has lost her head. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's in loving memory of Ansel. Can't really see anything else. It's 1896, it says down there. So we're going to carry on walking round. Paul has found something of interest. I don't know if I can get over there from here. So, and you've got some flint flush work here with some stone that's been obviously imported from other places. The, um, the churches in this area were mainly flint or um, rubble stone that have cut that anything they could get out of the field basically um, and that was the main building material of these churches there is brickwork sorry folks nearly fell over there um, there is brickwork that goes around this now Paul says that there's a tomb inside the bell tower we never saw it when we had a good look around there <laughs> Look at that flint work, how it's made into candles. It is, it's, it's amazing. I was just sort of explaining that um, the flint work, churches are made out of the flint because that was what was available in the areas at the time. We're going to have to get back a bit, I think, to have a look at that. Right. No, I, I try not to stand on them, but I think, I think that's worth having a look at the rectory at the moment as well. Yeah, so that's that's the tower there. This tower is Norman, mm -hmm. and uh, it's Norman up to the point, up to probably not much above this. But if you can see, you've got a face flint in the lower mm -hmm. part where it's harder to work up there. It's just ordinary flint, flint and rubble flint. Yeah. And now, the this is this is that funny little room, isn't it, that we saw? Um, that we're not really sure of its purpose. It, we thought it was a vestry. It probably is, but it's that one that's got that tiny little room, and we think it might be the anchorite cell. We're not going to be able to get much further than here. The yellow building over there. That's actually the vicarage. There Can I just say, say about that, because the three churches, like where we've been today, the, the priest in the time, on modern money, was paid £100,000 a year. That sort of Prime Minister money, mm. to look after the three churches, because yeah. these weren't parish churches as such. Well, this one was, but the others are old manorial churches, which went with the manor and mm. People who own, who own who own that and this, yeah. this this is added on, but this guy looked after it and yeah. got paid all that money. Yeah. Well, okay. I hope you enjoyed that one. I'm sorry if it seems a little bit muddled today, but like I say, we are up against time-wise because this church is going to be closed any minute. So it's been a bit hectic to get over here. This is in the village of Claydon. Probably about two or three miles outside Ipswich. Yeah, we're not far away. Um, so you just sort of go to Claydon and then when you get to the Crown Pub, go up the side of that, follow it up and you will... About half a mile. Yeah, you'll, you go up the hill for about half a mile and then you come to this. Um, you can park, we managed to park um, over the road from it, there's like a lay-by on it. What's that, what's that called at the front there? With the, 